that will not be an allowed expense mm -hmm. in that year of operation. It has to be spread over three years. Mm -hmm. And but again, this is capped at 30 percent. And again, this is capped at 30 percent at mm -hmm. the uh, earnings before interest and tax. and tax. So, assuming you are dealing with a large transaction where you had borrowed up to a billion shillings, mm -hmm. again, if I use the large amounts, mm -hmm. and we are saying that the exchange rate was 109 when you borrowed, and now it is at 129, you can imagine what we are saying. So, we are simply uh, chasing away investors and anybody who's trying to bring in foreign currency. Again, we are defying what we, we, are, we are saying. We, are, we want to attract investors. And on this other side, we are taking away their, their rights. Mm -hmm. So those are two, and maybe uh, if I'm allowed, I can proceed with another one. Yes, you yes. Can, uh, one. Yes, <laughs> a final one. Mm -hmm. I will talk about, uh, there are two other interesting ones, but uh, I, I could speak of uh, one that talks about, again, on investors. We used to have, or we have organization we call branch branch companies mm -hmm. where a, a company from a, a foreign country can come and set base here. So taxation was up to the point where the profits they have made, 30% of that, they can uh, they, they pay taxes for it. Mm -hmm. Anything above that, they can repatriate. Mm -hmm. But now they're being told, before you repatriate, you have to ensure that you pay additional tax on the income. You, you pay taxes first in Kenya. Exactly. Before you repatriate your, your profits. That was mandatory. You have mm -hmm. to pay your, your you have to pay your taxes mm -hmm. after from the profits that you've made. But before you can repatriate, you have to pay further tax. So that calls in for double taxation. But but but, but uh, because this is a conversation that has been held, uh, that has been there in the past, whereby and I think Kenya, you know, the national treasury is borrowing so much from the American system, whereby um, the American law dictates that before you pay, before an American company pays taxes in a foreign company, the first pay their obligations, their tax obligations to the American government first, and then the, they pay the remainder to the, to, 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 to the country where they are domiciled. And uh, the argument has always been that uh, you have companies, you have, for example, American companies in Kenya that are doing business here in Kenya, they are making a lot of profit, but instead of paying equal profits, I mean equal taxes to the government of Kenya where they are domiciled, they, 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 are, they, are, they are paying so much profit to American uh, government as opposed to the Kenyan uh, government. And, and so this bill here seeks to deal with that situation. In rebuttal to what you're saying, our economies are totally different. The American economy is a larger economy. Our economy is more of a developing economy. So we are at the mercy of the investors who are coming in. Mm -hmm. If we make it unfavorable for the investors to do that, they will go next door. Mm -hmm. And remember what we want. We want to grow our economy. We want more foreign currency to come in. Actually, we can't the target is 10 trillion shillings. Exactly. In the next, by the close of this year. Right. 10 um, trillion shillings. Mm -hmm. So we, if we behave like what, how the Americans will behave, mm -hmm. uh, taking care t t when they're trying to take care of the investors, then we'll t completely be losing focus. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yes. That's, that, that would be my submission on that. Mm -hmm. Moturi, do, uh, do you agree with, um, with um, uh, uh, lawyer Akamwara? Yes, I do agree. The issue here is actually um, the tractability of that particular amount uh, within a certain period. Mm -hmm. Previously, there was uh, three years mm -hmm. uh, when uh, the, 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 somebody is allowed to claim that. But now it has been restricted to three um, to three years, mm -hmm. we are, as, as the institute, we are, we are looking at it and say if that has to be there, mm -hmm. then that period should be extended to nine years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the other thing he has talked about investment. Uh, yes, the, the, the country need to, uh, uh, to to promote investment all around. Now, uh, I can add to what you have said. This is what you call uh, inve capital, inve uh, capital deduction. Mm -hmm where um, uh, an investor, once he has invested outside Nairobi, is allowed to deduct that capital expenses mm -hmm. as he works on the taxable income. Mm -hmm. Now, the current bill, and I think that is section uh, clause in, in yes. nine. Quickly, before we take a break. Where they have, they, they have, in, uh, they, they have said, mm -hmm. if you have been performing, uh, handling a certain business in Nairobi, and you start the same outside Nairobi, then you, you don't qualify for that kind of deduction.
-hmm. So that is going to affect uh, investment decisions in this country for most of the because if you have to go and start a completely different business mm -hmm. who, who does not relate to the business you are doing uh, that will also uh, so we are suggesting that uh, it should be allowed the way it has been allowed which is about 200% um, um, uh, and 150% uh, uh, outside Nairobi. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you, you yeah want to uh, and I wanted to add that. And you see, that helps in the devolution exercise in itself, mm -hmm. where we are saying we want to have as many organizations that relate to a certain uh, institution or to a certain region mm -hmm. going to that area. If you're going to Mumias, where sugar is being grown, mm -hmm. we want the factories to go to that side. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about uh, fishing, we want uh, the industries that relate to fishing to go to that side because what uh, the revenue was, the revenue authority was doing, it would give an incentive of double of the value of your investment. Mm -hmm. But now if you remove that and you go ahead and uh, even tax the repatriation of your profits, it means that you're discouraging investors to come in. Mm -hmm. Very good. I mean, when we come back, I also want to hear your, 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 your thoughts around uh, um, the um, introduction of VAT on insurance compensation uh, in relation to assets which uh, input VAT has been claimed. I also want to hear thoughts whether we are also talking about uh, double uh, taxation here. And, and also remember the reason why VAT was removed on uh, compensation was to help people and encourage more people to go into savings. Uh, now what we are asking is whether this is likely now to do the opposite. So um, I would want us to, I would want to hear your reactions to this. Well if you're just joining us, you're watching this check live from Broadcasting House. We are discussing the finance bill among many other issues and of course highlighting some of the less talked about issues that are contained in this document. My name is O'Brien Kimani. We are taking a break and then we are back. Very well. Welcome back. You're watching uh, Big Check Live from Broadcasting House. Our conversation is on this document. It is green in color, printed by the government printer. Um, it is called the Finance Bill 2023 and forwarded to the National Assembly. What you don't know is that uh, there are about how many pages? This is a document with about 377 pages. This is a document that has generated so much reaction. It's green in color. It has always been green. I think I need to find out why is it in green. Um, uh, and there are so many. It contains uh, about how many bills. It contains about um, a number of proposals. And so this is what we are discussing this morning. Uh, this is a document that is going to be debated in Parliament. And if it is approved in its current state, then it's going to have far-reaching consequences on your finances. And that's why we have financial experts in the studio. We have FCPA uh, um, Moturi, who is joining us uh, here uh, to help us discuss uh, this document, that is Evans Moturi and uh, Robert Kamara who is a taxation lawyer, joining us this morning so that they can help put into perspective this document. I mean, there's so much noise out there about this document, but now it's time that we put some sense into what exactly this bill talks about. Because there are also other areas that this bill is proposing that are so good to us as Kenyans. And so we also need to touch into that in the spirit of fairness. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much and welcome back uh, to this conversation. Uh, before we went for the break, I wanted to hear from you what will be the impact on uh, the VAT on insurance compensation and what exactly does it mean, Peter? I mean, uh, Everett. It's, it's okay. Uh, insurance compensation is what you get for what to replace what you lost. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe in your car, um, you you, you was involved in an accident and you have been compensated. Yeah. Now, when you receive that money, is the, the objective is to take you back 
to where you are if possible you can be able to buy the same car or but now this particular amount has been uh, uh, included be in the current uh, uh, bill which is under discussion mm -hmm. that that is a taxable uh, amount. amount now the effect of this is that um, uh, even the person who is receiving that money because that amount which was uh, given was supposed to restore this particular to a level that uh, it was. Mm -hmm. So that would be less by the amount that has been, uh, mm -hmm. has been And it would be 16 percent. 16 percent. And, and so, so then this begs the other question. I mean, if, for example, um, I bought a house and uh, then uh, for reasons, for one reason or the other, yes. uh, or let's even use a vehicle, I mean, it's got into an accident. Uh, it's written off. I am compensated by my insurer, uh, let's say, to the tune of two million shillings for the, for, the, for the car. And then I have to pay 16%, which comes to, um, is it 360? 360 or 320, yeah. thereabout. Yeah. Uh, and despite the fact that I had paid taxes on the car that got damaged, mm -hmm. uh, so isn't this more uh, uh, Kamwara double taxation on me? The same question was posed yesterday to the movers of the motion mm -hmm. and to their defense I would say that uh, there is a misconception yeah. actually when it comes to the understanding of uh, the issue to do with insurance. Mm -hmm. What the movers of the bill uh, are actually saying in their defense to the same they're saying that if a business has uh, uh, suffered a loss and a compensation is being done yeah. when you are lodging your claim mm -hmm. assuming it was one million on the goods that are lost yeah. so you lodge a claim of one million plus VAT mm -hmm. the additional 16 percent figure that is there when compensated by the insurance company mm -hmm. the money has to be paid back to the insurance so ideally, mm -hmm. it is not meant to be a double taxation, mm -hmm. it is a refund. Because if those goods were to be sold, then there is an element of VAT input yeah. that you would have claimed. Mm -hmm. And so the yeah. question of double taxation so here... So the double taxation is, does is not erased. come in. Mm -hmm. It does not come in. Yeah. But it's a debate that needs to be discussed and expounded further. As you rightly said when you started, mm -hmm. there are many good things that come in with the the bill and people have demonized the bill in itself mm -hmm. but we need to read it in uh, read it keenly mm -hmm. so that we don't lose focus mm -hmm. and end up concentrating on non issues mm -hmm. and when the main issues that are affecting us pass by then we end up losing mm -hmm. and we all start running to court when it's too late mm -hmm. I, I know in the in, in, in the past um uh, 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 because as I said you know when we were starting this program that every year I mean it is a custom that um, uh, uh, the the national treasury must uh, uh, table a finance bill in parliament, uh, you know, outlining various strategies that the government is going to use to put in place to ensure that uh, we raise uh, the taxes to uh, uh, to fund the budget. And I know in some cases people have gone to court uh, and uh, 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 you know argued on several issues. And I know uh, uh, Kamwara, you you have gone to court in the past and. Uh, Argue, argued about uh, um, the 1.5 percent, the three percent uh, minimum tax, the, the, the three percent minimum tax, and, yes. and the court ruled uh, in your favour. Uh, so uh, the, the, the people who have gone to court, you know, to challenge this document, do they have any any legal backing? Yes, they do. They have a legal backing, and they also have uh, more than a legal backing only on the Act, but also on many other laws that are there. We mm -hmm. have the Constitution. We have a reason why everybody should go to court. Mm -hmm. Number one, the main thing that uh, most of the lawyers have used is the issue of public participation. Mm -hmm. And a good question that you asked why this time around we are having so much public participation. Mm -hmm. What Parliament and the Executive have done is they have promoted, they have tried as much as possible to encourage public participation. Mm -hmm. What we are yet to see is this so-called public participation, all these memorandums that organizations have put in place, individuals and even government institutions have come in the defense of their own, uh, of, of their own when presenting the bill, whether this will be put into action and uh, right uh, they will have a reason why they will go to court and 
try and fight it out. Mm -hmm. So we have to see whether public participation will come to play. We've had uh, uh, sentiments that the bill has to pass as it is. Mm -hmm. That does not encourage public participation. Mm -hmm. So we are yet to see whether uh, that will come into play. Mm -hmm. what, what should come first? Is this um, to, to take this bill to court or to wait for it to be debated, to be passed, and then you move to court? What, what should come first? Rightly, everybody has a right to do what he feels is right according to the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a right to access justice. You can decide to take the bill to court, but ideally it is going to be debated, and that is the procedure. Mm -hmm. It is going to be debated in court today, uh, to, be, to be debated in Parliament uh, this week. Then after that, next if, week, next week mm -hmm. if it is not agreeable and becomes an act of Parliament, and you feel go to court, uh, you, you can go and fight uh, against that. Mm -hmm. But, but as it is now, because now it is a bill, it is not a law, um, can I take this document to court and say that it is infringing on my, on my rights as a Kenyan? And yet it is not a law, it is just a document. It is, they are just mere proposals. You can go to court and debate that it should not be debated in Parliament. You have a right to, 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 to do that because mm -hmm. you feel that... So I can only go to court and say that Parliament should not debate this document. But you need to have uh, very clear grounds on why mm -hmm. you feel that this should not be debated or should not be decided this way. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then the courts will decide whether to grant you your prayers. Yes. So if the court was to decide that... Um, can we anticipate a situation whereby courts would say this document should not be debated? Remember, the, the, <laughs> the, it, it, you have a right. <laughs> you, you, the, the, legislators, the, the, the work of the legislator mm -hmm. is to make laws, mm -hmm. right? Precisely. So, yes. Mm -hmm. So he has a right to make laws. Mm -hmm. So debating whether it should be in and out, mm -hmm. we we'll leave it to the courts to decide. Mm -hmm. We already have uh, a, a, but from a matter where taken by. Yes. Uh, as a lawyer, uh, would we have this kind? Do, do we have any precedent uh, or, or any jurisprudence? that can be used to argue that uh, this parliament should not debate this document. We already have the lawyer of the people in mm -hmm. parliament, in, uh, in court, who okay, has put in his, pe his petition, mm -hmm. okay, and we leave it to the courts to decide. The, the courts will decide. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, we are here, we are watching, and we will definitely uh, be analysing uh, the situation uh, um, as, as it, uh, as it uh, evolves in parliament. Um, something else that this bill is talking about is um, the uh, payment of excise duty within 24 hours of closure of a transaction within 24 hours uh, within the closure of a transaction uh, that puts tremendous uh, 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 pressure on Kenya Revenue Authority to, to, to do this uh, is this workable honestly speaking <laughs> You know, we are looking at um, a situation where we have perfect operating systems mm -hmm. in that uh, everything is online, mm -hmm. in that when you do some transactions, all the deductions will be done and you will be able to do them. Mm -hmm. But practically, this is not the that case. That is the now ideal situation. That, is, that this bill based is anticipating. On the bill. Based mm -hmm. on the bill. But the reality is different. The reality is, uh, mm -hmm. is different. Mm -hmm. And uh, these withholdings affect all Kenyans. Uh, some don't have systems, some have systems, mm -hmm. and uh, they may not. Actually, any system, your taxation should, uh, should, ha should be very good in terms of uh, administration. Mm -hmm. But now, this puts a lot of pressure on, on the Kenyans in giving that return. It's not actually practicable, mm -hmm. and there will be a lot of, um, uh, even preparing the accurate uh, records that you take to KRA may not be... The, of course, KRA is, has come up with the systems mm -hmm. like uh, ATIMS, the system that is using e e tax and but the ordinary uh, Kenyans may not have systems that will be able to meet that deadline. That uh, deadline is to us. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And and so there will we, be retribution. should remain uh, the way it has been mm -hmm. uh, up and, to and the, when is the 20th. Current? Up to the 20th of every 20th month. 20th of the following month. Mm, of the following month. Yes, that's when you, you can be able to pay that. Mm -hmm. But now, and again, this one, if it has to come immediately, there is also cash flow problem. Mm -hmm. As you deduct this and within that 24, uh, some amount may not have come. So you, it will cause a lot of chaos within the business environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As the Institute of Certified of Kenya. Sorry about that. Um, have, have, I'm, I'm sure you have uh, presented your reservations about this bill to, to the National Assembly. Um, have you done that? Yes. Because that's your responsibility. We, anyway. This is what we have presented. Mm -hmm. we, we what, have have you, what are you saying about that? Uh, that um, it across? should remain uh, the 20th month of the following month, of the, following the way month. it has been. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is something we have discussed and mm -hmm. we involved all the accountants countrywide. Mm -hmm. They have put uh, their input. We have already submitted this particular document mm -hmm. with a lot of uh, changes we have, which I may not be able to discuss here. Mm -hmm. And we expect that uh, uh, those changes will be implemented. And whichever uh, anything we, we, we want changes, we have recommended the exact thing that we want to be done by uh, the drafters of this particular document. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, yes. M maybe in Amor. support of uh, FCPA Muturi's uh, comment, let's make, make it practical. Mm -hmm. For a payment to go through, if it's an EFT transaction, mm -hmm. an EFT transaction may take up to three days mm -hmm. to go through. Mm -hmm. It takes two, two to three days mm -hmm. for a check and to EFT go through. stands for electronic, electronic funds transfer. Funds transfer. Yeah. We have all, we must always have the public in mind. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. Now, uh, in such a situation, then you can see you you will be now having to be financing mm -hmm. uh, the coffers mm -hmm. because you do not have. So you be forced flow. to pay from your pocket. You'll have to be paying from your pocket. Remember, you also have other expenses to pay. You have mm -hmm. to pay for the goods. You have to pay for other recurrent expenditures. Mm -hmm. And it makes, it makes it very impractical mm -hmm. to do business that way. Mm -hmm. Something I may want to touch also on the practicability of some of these things. Mm -hmm. There is the issue on the capital gains that has, been, that has come into fall. Mm -hmm. Let me just read you what we brought out in our memorandum. Mm -hmm. We say that where property is transferred in a transaction that is not subject to capital gains, this is what it says, mm -hmm. and the property is subsequently transferred in a taxable transaction within a period of five years, of less than five years, the amount has to be taxed at the adjusted price. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to make it and as simple. And the adjusted price this time around it will be what? The adjusted price will not take into consideration mm -hmm. the new price that was the, 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 the property was transferred to. Mm -hmm. Let me make it practical. For example, an, an aging man decides to transfer, as in the form of a gift to his son, mm -hmm. a property that he had bought some years back at one million shillings, mm -hmm. but decides to transfer now after the gains of uh, the valuation of the property to 10 million shillings. Mm -hmm. It becomes by default that the son takes the property at 10 million. Mm -hmm. Then due to cash flow issues, mm -hmm. maybe the son has to take care of the rest of the estate, he has to sell the property. Yeah. In less, in quickly, in less than in less than five years, as we are saying, mm -hmm. what the bill is introducing is saying that you have to now, if you decide to sell the property at maybe a gain of to eleven million shillings, mm -hmm. you have to pay capital gains on ten million. On ten million. On ten million. Mm -hmm. One million minus the eleven million you are selling it at. Mm -hmm. Now you can see the mischief that comes into it. Mm -hmm. uh, they are trying to cure some mischief, but at the end of the day, the individuals are suffering. So this, the man who has inherited the property or has received the, the property as a gift ends up paying taxes that mm -hmm. he should. Ordinarily, I mean, help us understand here. Yeah, For example, yes. um, uh, I'm selling my property, right. which is valued at 10 million shillings. Yes. Um, but I bought it when it was valued at two million shillings. Yes. If I dispose of this property today, which is now valued at ten million shillings, yes. Do I pay uh, CG, CGT, CGT. Uh, CGT on the two million shillings that I bought it, or the ten million shillings that I'm disposing of it of today? You pay it on the adjusted price. The ten okay. million shillings. Yes. Mm -hmm. you no, know, you get the difference between the ten million and, and the. the 
and, and, the, and the ten and the, and, and and the, the two, two million. So, so you it's pay on the eight, eight mm -hmm. that you pay five percent. Mm -hmm. Okay, if the capital gains being paid is five percent. Yeah. Okay. Now it has even gone up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. In now an ideal situation where uh, the transaction that was done, the transfer was being done to somebody where capital gains was not supposed to be paid mm -hmm. because as I given give an example where it's between relatives or in a situation where it's a divorce or matrimonial matter, mm -hmm. then in that case you're not supposed to pay the capital gains. Mm -hmm. So now they're discouraging the transfer of properties mm -hmm. from uh, one individual to another in, in such a situation. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and so legally uh, that clause now can be challenged on the basis of fairness? Yes. Um, uh, um, and the constitution is very clear that uh, yes. Uh, every person should be treated fairly yeah, and yes. equally. So uh, could this be one of the grounds that uh, 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 people have moved to court to challenge this document? Yes. On the grounds of fairness? On the issue of fairness, because it should be on case-to-case -case basis. If I was to give a recommendation, mm -hmm. I, we can see where the mischief is. Some people would actually just simply transfer from one person to another mm -hmm. or, uh, or, or a spouse to another spouse, mm -hmm. simply just to, to, to play around and cover some uh, go around paying taxes. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying now is let the issues be addressed on a case-to-case -case basis, mm -hmm. and that will introduce the issue of fairness. Mm -hmm. Let's also talk about something that, um, that is really going to help um, in the tax management and filing of taxes in this country. Um, and when you look at uh, the Tax Procedures Act, or TPA Section 23, it talks about electronic tax records, and uh, so the bill proposes to introduce Section 23A to empower the Commissioner to establish an electronic tax system for issuing tax invoices and keeping records of stocks. Now, in my argument, this is welcome move, and it is going to help in the management and the filing of taxes, as well as um, the issues of claiming for tax refunds. And we know that the Kenya Revenue Authority owes uh, re refunds of almost 60 billion shillings. The last time I checked, mm. uh, uh, what, what do you what do you make of this, Evans? Um. The, the most important thing in every, whether it's the systems, uh, we, there's a lot of advancement in technology, mm -hmm. and uh, it's very important that the KRA is leveraging on uh, the development of technology. Uh, the, why, uh, the, the issue which is bringing a problem is that um, in that, this particular bill, they are provided that uh, if there's somebody is not in that system or he has not generated an invoice through that system, then that should not be considered as an input tax. Mm -hmm. So what it means is that uh, uh, if all peop the majority of people may not, you know, in installing some of those systems, it costs especially for our, own, our companies, small companies. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, that should have been given time instead of uh, uh, implementing it immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, it should be left the way it has been. Of course, they can use the system, but the issue of, uh, of not allowing the input tax to be considered for uh, the, the, the companies which have not, uh, which have not uh, used the tax, uh, it, it, it teams. If they have not used that one, that's why we. That's why there is a lot of cries out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and and something else which I want to hear from Kamwaro, and this is Section 18 of uh, the Income Tax Act. Um, and I'm and I'm much more interested on uh, the withholding tax on rental income collected by agency and it talks about the bill proposes that a person who receives rental income on behalf of the owner of the premises shall deduct tax thereof or therefrom and so uh, are we anticipating a situation whereby now kenya revenue authority is going to uh, uh, appoint agent to be collecting taxes uh, on my rental or how, how is this expected to work out this is uh, a welcome move, and uh, as uh, 
uh, ideally part of the canons of taxation is it should be as easy as possible to collect the rent. Mm -hmm. So in a situation where we have large agents that collect taxes, we have uh, the large institutions in the country that have been mandated by property owners to collect mm -hmm. rent on behalf, mm -hmm. it is making it simplified. Simply uh, give us a schedule of all your clients, give us a schedule of the properties that they have, mm -hmm. and uh, give us a, a schedule uh, on the schedule, tell us how much revenue they have earned. Mm -hmm. Now this makes it simple mm -hmm. and the tax base is widened. Ideally the essence of this is to widen the tax net. But why, but, but also bearing in mind that uh, you know this, this bill is coming at a time when uh, you know the country is going through a rough economic patch and uh, you have so many Kenyans who are struggling to pay rent and some, sometimes you know they are delaying and sometimes they are paying in in, in, in installments. So how would these be calculated? This can be easily cured by dealing on uh, uh, computing the tax on a cash basis. Mm -hmm. If somebody has a rental income, uh, has a rental expense, supposed to pay rent of 10,000 shillings, mm -hmm. and has paid an installment, only managed to pay 4,000 shillings, let it be on the mm -hmm. installment of the amount paid. Mm -hmm. The same is uh, the same to the same point that you raised on the electronic tax system. Yeah. It's also again a welcome move. Mm -hmm. All that we want to do is let's have it as simple as possible. Because yeah. we are widening the tax base, and what we want is to have a many people coming into the net of paying VAT. Yeah. At the end of the day, instead of remaining at 16, we want it to be a situation where we'll be paying 12% mm -hmm. because the tax net is wider. Mm -hmm. And, and the tax base now will uh, will, will, will uh, make it easy for everybody to come in and pay his taxes. Mm -hmm. So you, you will not uh, find uh, those who are in an upper class or those who are running institutions and companies yeah. saying that we are forced to pay so much tax. Mm -hmm. Very good. Gentlemen, I mean, I can see, you know, time is coming to uh, one minute past 11 o'clock and we have to uh, bring this conversation to a close. But not before I give you each one of you 30, 30 seconds uh, to make your final submissions on the Finance Bill 2023. And I'll start with Evans Moturi. Uh, <coughs> my last comment would be is that... Uh, the government has a responsibility to collect the tax and incur uh, uh, the necessary expenses for mm -hmm. the growth of this particular country. Mm -hmm. But they, they, as they do it, the, the tax system must be very convenient to the Kenyans. And uh, some clauses which are in that particular bill, mm -hmm. they are actually negating the uh, the policy of the government mm -hmm. especially the hustlers policy because uh, there are a lot of clauses which are uh, touching on uh, the, the clauses like now for example one of the terms is um, to have digital and uh, digital super highways mm -hmm. and uh, when you bring in the tax on content and uh, this is actually um, being done, it's not my my age who will uh, start working on the contents. Mm -hmm. Of course, I can do it, but most of them are the young people, the youth, mm -hmm. which the government is supposed to to support. Yes, they have said the housing um, the housing uh, levy is going to encourage jobs, but uh, we cannot concentrate only on um, on the building sector or to create jobs. Jobs should be created all over because now if we talk of are we motivating the youth to go to the construction industry or what are we doing but the main thing uh the the, the housing kenyans have houses mm -hmm. institutions have facilities that to provide for food it's it's going to be very um a heavy load yeah. to employees especially those who have been give uh, loaded with they have housing and they have other taxes mm -hmm. the disposable income they will have more effect negative effect than what we expect thank very you very good thank you uh Kamara. a budget has got two sides the incomes as we are all discussing about where the revenues will come from, where the money will, whether it will come from debt, mm -hmm. whether the money is going to come from taxes, or where the money is going to be f coming from the parastatus. Yeah. That is where the money is coming from. Mm -hmm. That is being discussed widely. But are we also remembering that we need to discuss about how the expenditure should be? Mm -hmm. We need to tighten our belt if we are to manage to finance this budget when yeah. it comes to incomes. Mm -hmm. But also the person who is spending needs to look at how he spends. So we need also to remember that expenditure has to be done right. Let's not forget to monitor the expenditure. 
let the auditor general be very keen and hear the cry of the citizens mm -hmm. that we are paying too much taxes or we are receiving too much uh, threats when it comes to proposals mm -hmm. and let it be clear that government needs also to spend the money that we receive wisely. Maybe we may save a bit more and when we come to the next budget we shall start with a good opening balance. Very good. Gentlemen, this is of course an ongoing um, conversation and uh, we'll definitely be calling you back to come here so that um, we can continue to analyze the um, the content contained in this document and of course uh, the debate that will unfold in Parliament in the coming days. Otherwise, thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning. Your time is highly appreciated and your insight is well received. Ms. Antisana. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Well, we've been talking to Robert Kamwara. He's a taxation lawyer and an advocate of the High Court as well as FCPA Evans Moturi who is a tax expert working with the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Kenya. Joining us this morning to help us put into perspective the Finance Bill 2023, the document that has generated so much reaction from public uh, to the church to the um, economist. Uh, remember this document is coming up for debate A in the Parliament next week. And also remember on the 15th of this month, the um, cabinet uh, of the national, the cabinet secretary of the national treasury is expected to outline government expenditure plan for the year 2023-2024. That will be on Thursday next week. And of course, remember, we're going to beam you all the live proceedings from the assembly. We'll continue with more debates on this document as time goes by. My name is O'Brien Kimani. The first hour is over. We are coming back with the second hour of this conversation and we want to look at the cryptocurrency. Well, this is a segment of the market that is growing so rapidly. But there are challenges and of course we shall be looking at, uh, into that. I will be joined by crypto experts. Stay right here for that conversation. <laughs>